Hi, I'm Jamie Wyver from the RSPB's Notes on Nature team. We've had a very unusual visitor to the UK over the last few months, a bearded vulture. Joining me for this little chat is Indy Kimo Green, who has been out and watched it, photographed it, and avidly followed its journey on social media because it's been absolutely extraordinary. Indy, welcome to Notes on Nature. Um, tell us a little bit about bearded vultures. Where would they normally be found? Well, th firstly, thanks for having me. Um, so, yeah, the bearded vulture. So it's obviously a huge surprise to find it here because they're not really well known for flying across um, for flying across oceans like the Channel. Um, and yeah, it arrived roughly sort of late June when it first got to the UK. Um, it was really, really hard to track down. No one, no one knew where it was, even though the ginormous three meter wingspan, it did make it surprisingly hard to track down. But um, yeah, so just having it here has been a proper, proper treat all the way from the Alps. Let's talk now about where the vulture first turned up. Where did it appear and was it somewhere that you'd expect to see it? Uh, no, not entirely. It was sort of a bit out of its sort of out of its own habitat, really, because obviously it's come from the French Alps and the high mountains of the Pyrenees. But yeah, this one turned up on um, Howden Moor in the Peak District. Um, and it was just it was just roosting on a just like really steep rock face, really. Um, so not quite the place to expect to find it, but um, it, I mean, it stood out like a sore thumb when it was at the end because quite a lot of the area is so flat on this on this moorland. But um, it was not quite the place to expect it, but not too far out of its comfort zone. And plenty of food for it there, I guess. Plenty of food. Yeah, there were lots of sheep that died from natural causes um, and lots of mountain hares and things like that. Um, and I think, um, I think later on, it's been seen feeding on roe deer and things like that. So it's been finding a lot of food. And because, especially because they are completely scavengers, there's obviously no danger to any domestic animals or anything like that. It is, so 85% of the bearded vultures diet is made up of pure bones. So they have this, I can't remember what the acid's called, but they have an acid, an acid inside their stomach when they basically swallow these bones whole. And then they sort of regurgitate it in a pellet and then swallow it again until it's broken down. And so they, it's, it's, oh, they're just, they're just crazy birds. Incredible. So they, they recurgitate, so it's it was like a bird of prey where we go to take a pellet, but then it goes back down again. <laughs> yeah, yes, they, yes, yeah, it's like a kestrel would sort of regurgitate a pellet, leave it there, done. But no, bearded vultures, they just, they swallow like a whole sort of like femur, whoop, straight down, and then bring it back up at the end after it's a bit dissolved, and then straight back down again, up again, up again, down again. But yeah, so it's, yeah, they're, they're just, I mean, I can do it, so, you know, full, <laughs> full respect to them. I, I, I certainly wouldn't attempt it myself, but yeah, incredible animals. <laughs> really cool. I, now, I don't know how many times you went to visit it, but what was it like experiencing that for the first time? Yeah, so the first time I went to visit was, um, well, I got a text from a birder friend who said, I'm going up for the bearded vulture tomorrow. Um, do you want to come with me? And I was like, okay, right, what time are you going to pick me up? And he said, probably around 4 a.m. I was like, okay, right, I'll go get some sleep now then. Um, and then he texted me again. He said, I've heard parking's quite bad. I'll pick you up at three. And I was like, okay, right, I'll go to sleep now. <laughs> and he said, and then he texted me another text and said, actually, I've heard parking's really, really bad. So I'll pick you up at two. And so then in the end, we left at one because we both just stayed up all night. Um, but so yeah, we had this almost three hour trek over this um, over this moorland on Howden Moor. And yeah, we first got there and we went over this ridge and we were only expecting a couple of birders. And there were 300 people stood on this in on the top of this valley looking down wow at the place where the vulture <laughs> was yes yeah so um yeah that was that was pretty insane so yeah and then we waited for five hours for it to take flight and then when it did it only flew about five meters onto a rock just below and we're like well that's not very exciting um but then after another 15 minutes it took off and it flew underneath us through the valley we were all standing over and it rose to be eye level with us and then started circling about 10 meters above our heads and um <laughs> it, was, it was it was properly one of those jaw dropping moments so you sort of because i had my i had my telephoto and then my camera with me and i was snapping away and i thought actually i'm just gonna take my eye away from the camera for a second i did and um and i haven't regretted it because above me was a vulture i mean just like just i i, I had this weird thing the other day because obviously i've seen it about maybe four or five times now and I sort of got used to it after a while. But then I said to a friend the other day, this, this precise line, there was a bearded vulture in the UK. And then I just looked at all my photos and thought, there was a bearded vulture in the UK. Like getting your head around that, it's just yes. so, it's, it's just, you, you can't, it's so weird. It's so weird. But yeah, as I saw about five times and each time it was just brilliant. 
you mentioned the wingspan briefly earlier, I think. And what is it? Is it nine nine feet? I don't know what that is in meters, centimeters. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's about three. It's about three meters. It's the biggest bird in the UK. It's um just it's just a smidge bit um smidge bit bigger than a white-tailed eagle. Um, but yeah, just a oh, ginormous bird, absolutely ginormous. Massive. How did it get its name? Because it, it actually earned a, a name, didn't it, while it was here? It did, yeah. I can't, I wasn't involved with the name making, but I believe it was um, Tim Birch from the Derbyshire Wildlife Trust who I was sort of working with um, while we were monitoring the vulture. And I think he did a poll on Twitter. And I think Vigo is the most popular name, I believe. Um, yeah, I quite, I quite like the name. Yeah, it's, it's always good to have a bit of alliteration when you're naming naming wildlife, I think, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Let's, let's talk about what happened after it left the Peak District, because I think a lot of us expected it to, it, the weather was getting cooler, we expected it to just drift south, cross the channel and, and head off to, to the Alps. But what what really happened? Yeah, so, well, after, I mean, it did spend, it did sort of tour a bit of the Peak District. So when I went to see a couple of times, every time it was almost on a different location. So it was roosting on a different rock face and it was moving around the peaks. Um, and then all of a sudden, I think it was on the 17th or the 19th of September when people started noticing it not coming back to the same roost every evening. Um, and it went um, and it went a little bit further afield and it roosted on a different rock face. And we thought, OK, that's a bit further south. I wonder if it's planning something. Um, and then all of a sudden it just disappeared off the face of the earth. We thought, right, that's it. it I mean, you know, we don't know what's happened to it. We were quite worried, actually. But then we got an alert that it turned up over Oxford. And they were like, okay, right, that's definitely so it's definitely heading south now. So, you know, bon voyage, see you later. Um, and then next alert was North Norfolk. And then it was like, um, that's a slightly not not quite the right way, but never mind. Um, sort of, you know, where you I mean to be honest, if the bolt just got here and the navigation's obviously slightly off. <laughs> yeah, navigating through um through the east coast of England. Then yeah, Norfolk. Then it was Spalding in Lincolnshire. Then I think I'm saying this right. Was it Crow Vale? Was, um, where you? Well, I believe you saw it in. Um, yeah, so it's a, a place called Crowland. Um, yeah. And it moved down right down to I think it was was it Beachley Head? It's called. Um, I think it went over the lodge. I think it went over our SPD oh, course, HQ yes. at one point, didn't yeah. it? it extraordinary. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. That was that was quite funny. And then yeah, of course, yeah, it was seen over right over the central London. Yeah. Um, which would have been a hell of a sight. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then it's yeah, then it was really weird because it was down right down in Kent um, and then it flew out to sea really high and everyone thought right that's it it's gone and 10 minutes later it came back again um, but then <laughs> on the 15th of August <laughs> yeah I know and on the 15th of October because the wind has got to be just right for these birds so um because they hate they don't really do much flapping so when it was in the fens there were some really good videos of it doing actually a lot of wing work mm. um but uh wing work I've never said that before but I quite like it wing um, work but, I like that's a new thing yeah, wing, I, I like we're, that, gonna, yeah. we're gonna use that now yeah, birds wing do work. wing work <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wing work. But yeah, the wind was just right on the 15th, apparently. Um, and then it just sailed straight across the straight across the sea and not been any reports um on mainland Europe yet. But hopefully we can get some soon and we can hopefully sort of follow it back to its some um, homeland. Oh, it'd be good to know. It could be good to find out where it goes. And um, what did we actually learn about Vigo while she was here? Yeah, so like you say, she we learned it's a female. I've given it away, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go yeah. yeah, no, go for it. Yeah, um, no. So it was, it was. Oh, okay, I've got a funny story. So when it was at the first roost on Howden Moor, um, myself and Tim Birch got special permission to go underneath the roost site once the bearded vulture had left and gone off feeding for the day. Um, and it was down a sort of little, well, it's quite a large valley actually. Um, we were sort of sliding down through like piles of heather. And then a whole row of about 80 people on the top watching us thinking, what the hell are we doing? Um, and then, yeah, we got underneath the roost site and there was so much vulture poo everywhere and it smelled amazing. But um, we were after a feather to obviously get DNA from it. And then Tim had walked on a bit and then I sort of looked to my right and there was this feather here. And actually, I've got that precise feather here, but it was this. Yeah. And you may be thinking... Oh yeah, that's that looks probably definitely not like a vulture feather. Yeah. But we were so overwhelmed that I'd found a feather underneath this roost site. This also smells amazing, I will say. Yeah. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, we were, we were, I was so overwhelmed. I thought, right, science paper. I'm in the history books. I've done it. Um, <laughs> and then we and then we both did a little video. And we both did selfies together with the feather, and all the photographers and people on top were cheering. We were like, yeah, we're gonna get it. <laughs> um, and then we had one of the. Um, experts from the Vulture Conservation Foundation ran at Tim's house later that day and said, I've got a present for you. Um, and I whipped out the feather and I was sort of hoping, up. <gasps> but then he just looked at me and went, I've 
don't think that's a really odd feather. And he sent it to his friends and it turned out to be a male kestrel tail feather. <laughs> <laughs> And we, because it, it's so obvious now, because if you look at that, that's obvious, <laughs> so obviously, if you look at the kestrels, like that's so obviously a tail feather. Um, but we yeah. were just like, it's underneath the vulture roost, directly underneath the vulture roost, and we thought, that's it, done, that's it. Um, but thankfully, someone from the Vulture Conservation Foundation found two. Uh, I think they were breast feathers um, when it was up at Roost in Crowden, and, and we got the DNA back. And it, yeah, like I say, it's a female that was born in a wild nest in the French Alps last year. Yeah. A fascinating story, and you mentioned the smell a few times. Can you describe it? Is it is it was it revolt? Was it a kind of rotting meat sort of smell? Or oh, I mean, it it's, it just smelled wild. Um, I, I, <laughs> that's that's the only way I can really describe it. It just smelled proper wild. That's all I can say. <laughs> it, it's a smell that we all aim to come across when we're in the countryside. <laughs> um, so before you go, can you tell us a little bit about your new role? Because you've joined the RSPB's Youth Council, haven't you? Yes, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm super, super, super chuffed to join them. Um, so, yeah, so we're actually discussing um, what our specific roles are going to be, hopefully, um, tomorrow evening as we speak on the 19th. Um, but, yeah, so just sort of helping out with the RSPB, come up with policies and attending events and, um, you know, trying to push for a little bit of change in any way we can. Um, and, yeah, just just trying to just protect nature in any way we can, like I said. So, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm really properly that is one of the highlights of my year oh, yeah besides the vulture but uh, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no that is no i'm really really honored to join you good well, congratulations on joining the youth council and um, indy thank you ever so much for talking to us today thanks for having me